Donald Trump is torching Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, saying that his second would-be assassin believed their rhetoric of him being a threat to democracy. And the liberal media has been cranking up their Trump derangement syndrome to 11 by comparing the man to Hitler. Let's not pretend that Donald Trump isn't exactly like Mussolini, exactly like Hitler. He is that guy. Domestic terrorism is a real thing, and he is the guy that stokes it. All he's doing is riling up his base and inciting violence on and horrible rhetoric. Let me know who I got to vote for to keep Hitler out the White House. Yeah, I think Hitler, Mussolini. A lot of people have tried to draw similarities between Mussolini and Hitler and the use of the terminology like vermin. You know, uh, Jesse, they claim that Donald Trump is rallying up his base and exciting vi and inciting violence as though he is somehow responsible. It's kind of like victim blame. Mm, yeah, Greg made that great point last week. Their reaction to him getting a second assassination attempt was, you got to stop golfing, you got to stop doing rallies, and stop talking about illegal immigration. Mm -hmm. It's just him. He is inviting the bullets. And in a sad way, he's trapped, Janine, because if he loses the election, they want to throw him in prison. And if he keeps winning the election, they're going to try to put another bullet in him. That's how scary this is. And this guy is clearly a Democrat voter. He is a Democrat donor. He has a Harris Walls bumper sticker on his car and echoes the same kind of slogans you hear about, you have to eliminate this threat to democracy. Again, Greg made a great point. This isn't just like this. They've been browbeaten for four years about this guy. Threat, 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 threat. And when a guy who's as cuckoo as this guy hears that and wants to be a hero in order to save democracy, maybe he lurks around the golf course. Maybe that's how he becomes the hero that he's always wanted to be. And it's similar to the way these Muslim radical preachers used to operate. Remember, they used to have these sermons that were so hysterical, it would trigger lone wolves. And we used to have to go after these guys. I think we waxed a few just because they were so venomous. And this is what's happening now if you equate that with the media. Are they going to stop? No. And that's how sick they are. They won't stop. And, you know, Dana, how is it even possible that Lester Holt would tie an assassination attempt to, um, you know, what's going on in Springfield and, and threats in that town, bomb threats that are being made? Is, is that whataboutism? I mean, I, I'm not in Lester Holt's mind. I know they have a 21-minute newscast every night, so maybe they're trying to figure out a way to just, like, put everything together. I also think that Springfield thing is bad. But separate from that, I look at the media and I think, so the Babylon Bee having the best headline, the Democrats accuse Trump of inciting further violence by not dying. Okay, but it's not, that's the Babylon Bee. It's not that different. The Washington Post said another chance for Trump to frame Democrats as dangerous has emerged. Um, Politico, Republicans outraged over possible assassination attempt. Well, yeah. I mean, shouldn't, are, are you not? I, I, just because you're not a Republican, are you not outraged by this? Like, if, if there was ever a time to be outraged, it would be now. And I think that the media continues to get us into the situation where um, we're living in a world that is highly charged. The nation needs a circuit breaker. We need both candidates to be protected. We need this president in particular. Donald Trump has had two assassination attempts on his life. Do you think there aren't more copycats out there? Um, and I'm sure they're having very tough conversations to what Jesse's saying, which is he's going to be out there campaigning. He's going to do it. And he must be protected because if the... USA Today put this story in the top left corner of the whole, of the front page. Okay, the the front page is about hope in America. Colleges divesting of Israel warn. An assassination assassination attempt on one of the candidates in America is in the top left corner, as if it's an afterthought. And they're lucky it's a, they were able to put it there and not make it another story. All of us are very fortunate that it turned out the way that it did, because in a moment, in a, in a, just in a, the nation is on a hair trigger. If, if, if something happens to Donald Trump or Kamala Harris, this nation is going to be in a lot of trouble. So we need the Secret Service to have what they need. If you need more money, great, as Jesse said, we'll get you the more money. But both of these candidates need to be safe. And whoever gets elected after that, both 
candidates need to be safe after that as well. You know, Harold, there's still an ad up where, um, a, a, an ad, there, Senator Bernie Sanders said starts with, there's not a lot of time left. I'm asking everyone to pitch in uh, and support Team Harris. Donald Trump is extraordinarily dangerous. He is a threat to our democracy. I mean, this has been going on for years, um, you know, 2015. You know, this isn't Rick Wilson. This isn't going to be done until someone puts a bullet in Donald Trump. 2017, it was a Bernie Sanders supporter who shot Steve Scalise. I mean, you can't, you know, this can't continue to go on, and yet they still call him Hitler. Right. So I, I want to be clear. I don't blame Democrats for this, and I, I don't. I don't assume you guys are either. We we have reached a terrible, terrible, terrible point. I mean, if we want to talk to politics, I think the guy that did this, uh, that tried to do this to President Trump and is, is is under arrest, I think may have voted for President Trump in 2016. I, I hear everything. I, I don't want to get into the, the back and forth over that. I, I do think that, Justin, when we talk about what's happened with previous presidents, remember, President Ford, Gerald Ford, there were multiple attempts on his life, uh, and thankfully the Secret Service and others were able to throw it. Sometimes it, it got closer than they wanted. Obviously, President Reagan uh, was shot. That's no excuse or justification at all for what we're dealing with today, but I think we have to put some of this uh, in context, that violence has been a part, unfortunately, of our politics. When even uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. was shot uh, and killed after after a rally, which it looked as if he was rallying to perhaps be the nominee of the Democratic Party. Uh, again, this is no justification or excuse for any of it. I, I applaud law enforcement because I think there's so many efforts uh, to harm our country and to, to harm presidents that are uh, that are stopped and neutralized by by law enforcement. What I again am most interested in is trying to determine. What it is the Secret Service is doing wrong? What is it that they need to do right? Because then I think you're right. Regardless of who wins this election, uh, this this kind of, unfortunately, I hope I'm dead wrong, but unfortunately, this kind of behavior may not stop because I do believe the language has ratcheted up on a lot of sides. Remember, President, former President Trump, for the entire presidency of President Obama, he said that he was not a citizen. Uh, he's called President, he called Vice President Harris stupid. Look, I think it, it, there's a lot of this on both sides. And I'm not no, assigning, not. Time out, well, Big there difference. Is. I'm not assigning blame to President Trump by any stretch for anything that has happened. But I do think we are naive and not, and not being honest if we don't say that there's on both sides, we need to calm this down. This has gotten completely, completely out of control. There's no, nothing wrong with saying you're against someone because of their politics and to vote against them. But to say you're against someone's politics and to enact violence against them, I don't care who says it, a Democrat or Republican, that's just wrong. Okay. Um, Greg, I disagree with Harold. I want to know if, if, if you do. Uh, I think there's a big difference between saying someone's not a citizen and someone's stupid and calling someone Hitler and an existential threat. Harold says he wants to put things in context. What context would you put this in? Well, I didn't. I didn't say that, Judge. You did. I wrote I said, it down. I said the context of violence against presidents, that President Ford. Which I want, I want to be clear on this. I'm, I'm not saying there's context in what happened with President Trump. I'm saying presidents have been targeted before. Is the only thing I was saying so put it in, in terms of the context. Go ahead. Well, I'm not like I'm not interested in telling people they can't say that stuff. If you want to call him Hitler, call him Hitler. I don't really care, Mike. But I do think there is a difference. In how people react to it, there's a weaponized persuasion when it's done over time. For example, when, if you want to bring up that Trump uh, was, was, was Obama born in the United States, 99% of the people thought that was a joke. It was not a sustained thing. What you're dealing with with Democrats, I think, is a weaponized persuasion tactic. Uh, if you continually, over time, compare somebody to Hitler or Mussolini, you say they're you actually spread the key words of existential threat to democracy, uh, then or evil uh, over time. There is a definite there's a definite reason for that. There's and there's also just one little event that like people should remember when Trump got shot and he shouted fight fight fight. There were people in the media who claimed he was inciting violence. Yep. Okay, so what I want you to to remember that. As they start to focus on the Trump base, because the Trump base is now going to be the target, it's going to be their response to the attacks either on Trump or on them. It's never the actual attack. It's their response to it. And they're always disappointed because after the Crooks attack, nothing happened. I, I don't think, you know, 
if anything happens to Trump, there's going to be a lot of sorrow and a lot of pain and a lot of anger. But there won't be looting. There won't be rioting. There won't be crime because, you know, we get up, we go to work, we try to be good mm -hmm. people. I'm not, I don't know if that's the case with the radicals because you see that on campuses with, with, with a war that's in another country. That, there is crime and vandalism and, and taking people hostage over an issue that has nothing to do with us. Imagine mm -hmm. what could happen if something new were to happen to them, and we don't want them to, but I'm just saying, on the whole, the, the Trump supporters, are they're, they're on good behavior. All right, coming up, Kamala totally bombs her first solo interview. This is me. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.